Hey y'all, Joe here from Southern Coast of Cooking again. I did a video for you yesterday. We were talking about barbecue time. You know, how long does it take to get something done? How long is it going to take in my cooking for I can pull that pork roast or those ribs or that brisket? And I kind of want to do another video along with that one. I'm going to call this one barbecue temperature because temperature is another very important thing, right? Uh, and a lot of, some people comment on my barbecue time. Well, it's not time's temperature. Tell them to watch temperature when when the uh, the brisket you know reaches 202 degrees, it's done. Or when the pork butt reaches 198, it's done. Or whatever you may have. Well, I'll be honest with you, that's not always the exact case as well. The the temp's not an exact science. Some people said the temp in your pit needs to stay at 225 the whole time, and you know. It's hard to keep an exact temperature in any pit, even something like the Big Yoder, you know, it's going to fluctuate a little bit. There's other factors outside of there as well. Um, like I was talking about the different types of wood, different pellets, stuff like that. Anyway, I wanted to talk about different methods of, of getting the temperature in your barbecue pit and in your meat today. And also, yes, it's very important. Now, don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying barbecue temperature doesn't matter. It does. Very important. It's about the closest thing we can get to when it's done, knowing besides the tried and true method of sticking a probe in there or a fork and just seeing it when it's fork tender or probe tender, as some people call it, and that's when it's done or assuming it's when it's that perfect color. But anyway, uh, barbecue temperature of barbecue is very important, and there's several d types of uh, you know you've got chamber temperature, internal temperature, stuff like that. You other people talking about. First off, um, we'll go with a mixed bag, something like this, like the tap Q here. You'll see me uh, cooking with it. This guy has four pro ports in it. That means I could have three in the meat, one in the chamber, or any combination of the two. It can take chamber temperatures and it can take the meat internal temperature. Very handy. Also, it relays that temperature uh, to my Wi-Fi router right at my house, which sends it through an app on my cell phone anywhere I am in the world, as long as I can get uh, cell phone uh, service. So, you don't have to be on Wi-Fi on my phone, just cell phone service. So, this is a great tool here. I use the Type Q a lot. Another, very similar to that, is the iGrill, or the iGrill 2 as I use. It has four Pro ports. Um, it sends the temperature, of course, here on the face, just like tap cube, but it sends it via Bluetooth to your phone. So if you're in 100 feet, 150 feet or so, you can get your temperature on that. Again, this is used for uh, ambient temperature or chamber temperature and also internal temperatures of the meats. Okay, uh, it has a very good candy probe I used last week making that beer candy. It, it worked very well. Now, the downside to those two temperature of devices is well for one thing they can not handle very hot heat so if you were grilling something let's say you're above you know 400 or something like that a really high heat especially eight nine hundred you know whatever so you don't want to use those it will melt those probes that will take the probe wire that will not last so uh, in high heat situations that's not what you're looking for and of course they are limited to you can only have four points of temperature that you can take which is a pretty good bit, but still you are limited to that. Another thing we've got out there now is uh, this is my Javelin Pro uh, Instarete thermometer is what you call this. All right, this, you basically poke this into the meat. You push a button up here and it, it's backlit, it lights up. It'll give you a beep in about three seconds. You can know what the internal temperature is on your meat. This is used by a lot of people in the health industry, you know, when they go around, they're taking temperatures and different like buffet lines and stuff like that, making sure everything's right. You can take temperature of a lot of different things in a short amount of time. Very accurate, too. Um, I know this, like I said, this is the Javelin Pro by Lava Tools. Uh, you can also get, a lot of people use a brand called Therm Thermalworks, Thermapins about 20 or 30 more dollars, whatever your choice is, this one works great for me. Um, so that's the Instarete thermometer is what you call that. Okay, another thing you'll see people using is a laser thermometer. Now this right here, basically what this does, it shoots a laser at the surface, it bounces back and gives you an infrared reading 
temperature, like right about here. Uh, of course, all this does is, is take surface temperature. I use this a lot if I'm getting ready to sear something on hot grates or uh, on a skillet. And I can take the surface temperature of my grilling surface or my searing surface. Uh, it really doesn't help you much on engaging the food's temperature because uh, you know it only gets right there on the surface. Plus, depending on how much moisture and stuff like that's on the surface of your food, you may not get that accurate of a temperature. Um, Again, that's mainly for surface temperatures, searing grates, pots, pans, stuff like that. All right, another thing. Uh, this is a unique category. I don't know what you really want to call this. This here is uh, what they call this the steak champ. Now, what this is, this is kind of like, remember those little thermometers that you used to stick in your turkey and you leave it in there while it's in the oven and it, say it's done. This is like that on a super advanced level that's actually accurate and works. Let me get it out of here. So what it is, it's just a little steak. It's almost like a golf tee. It's not quite that big. You stick this into your piece of meat while it's cooking, and uh, it will, when it gets to a certain temperature, it'll light up a certain color. And then when it gets past that temperature for a while, it'll light up a different color. So there's three different uh, different temperatures on here. This is used for steak, uh, medium, medium rare, a little closer to rare, medium, and I think medium well. So it's a really handy tool. The good thing about this is you can stick it in your steak and you can put it on really hot heat. I think it goes up to about 900 degrees. So this is great to be able to take the actual internal temperature of something while it's searing. Um, downfall, I guess, uh, you would say, I mean, it's only one of these. Uh, if you've got a bunch of different steaks and different thicknesses and stuff like that, you, you know, you got your reading on one steak. You don't really want to be pulling this out of the steak and sticking it in another one. So uh, it's really kind of made for if you were cooking maybe just one steak or not too many steaks or you weren't cooking uh, steaks that were a bunch of different thicknesses. Let's say you're cooking a bunch that are, that are very similar. You could use something like that. But anyway, those are methods of, of getting your temperature. I think everyone needs to at least start out with a good... Uh, good chamber thermometer, whether you, you need something like this, this would be more of the top of the spectrum, the TAPQ, or something like this iGrow 2. You could even go down and maybe get an iGrow Mini or one of the Maverick probes. And look, all these thermometers and stuff, I'll put a link in the description box where you can get them. But the temperature, yes, is important in barbecue, but do know that it's not the end-all, be-all. And different things can affect the temperature in your pit, it can affect the temperature of the meat. Like, you know, when you have a stall, people talk about you got your stall in your barbecue. I'll tell you what that is in a second. I say you've got a large piece of meat, a bunch of fat, sinew, everything in there. It's melting down, melting down. And at some point, that meat almost, almost like it starts to perspire. Uh, water bubbles and vapor all come up to the top. What it is, is you're melting all that fat and collagen and everything else from the center. It's starting to come out. And when that happens, uh, it cools the meat down, almost like when we sweat. So you get what you call the stall. Your meat may stay at the same temperature for a long time, a couple of hours within the same five degrees of temperature. Um, that's another reason you can't really cook by time because you're not really sure if you're going to get a stall or how long your stall is going to be. And they say if you can keep your temperature more constant that you can um, avoid the stall somewhat. There's also other methods of wrapping the meat and stuff like that to help you press on through that stall. But anyway, I wanted to share all this temperature stuff with y'all. Y'all please uh, like my videos, sub my channel, y'all smoke on, God bless, and I appreciate it. Remember, I have all the stuff that you saw here in the description box. Thank y'all. Also, I wanted to tell y'all as far as target tips for different meats and stuff, you can go online, there's grass and stuff for all that, like pork, pork uh, shoulder, pork loins, all that sort of stuff. Um, a lot of times thermometers will come with that kind of stuff too. But then like I said, that is just to give you a basic um, basic uh, temperature to go by to shoot for. Now it's a little bit closer to home when, when you're doing like a pork loin or leaner meats. You can kind of, you know, bank on getting them to that temperature and they're going to be done. Because basically all that's all you're trying to do, that's where you kill all the bacteria, but yet you you're, you're not drying the meat out, but on stuff like a pork butter or brisket, you may have a 10 to 15 degree window in there where you need to be checking and poking and stuff like that and seeing when it's the most tender, because as soon as it's tender enough, you need to pull it on off the cooker. You don't want to overcook. That's the main thing. You don't want, you can always cook stuff a little bit more. Now, you want it to be safe, safe to eat and all that, but you don't want to overcook anything, so 
That being said, like I said, you can look up those barbecue temperatures and stuff like that. I'll try to find the link actually and put in the description box for y'all as well. Show you a bunch of different temperatures to stuff that you can shoot for so you'll know. And, and also cooking chamber temperatures for different meats. I do pretty much any kind of barbecue I do, I'm anywhere between 225 to 250. You know, that, that's just you know, pretty much, and you, and it doesn't hurt to be a little bit on the low side, 225, I don't think, you, you know, it may take a little bit longer, but you've got guys who like a faster cook, uh, I know, I think even Myron Mixon or something cooks, they say he cooks his brisket real fast, maybe at 300 degrees or something like that, that's, uh, you know, a different skill set and something you might look into, so anyway, the barbecue temperatures, you know, they give you something to go by, but remember, they're not exact, you just need, you got to get in there, you got to test, and you you gotta test on your pit, see how your pit holds at certain temperatures and see what you need to do, how you need to adjust your vents. You know, if you're cooking with charcoal or stick burner or something like that, or your pellets, how what kind of pellets you need to be using, stuff like that, where you need to set your thermostat. So anyway, I just wanna throw that in there.